Hey guys, what's up? We're going to look at temperature sensing circuits. This is a practical example of the use of thermistors and potential dividers. So a quick recap about NTC, negative temperature coefficient thermistors. These are thermal resistors, which means that their resistance depends upon their temperature. So you can see in this graph here, as the temperature increases, the resistance goes down. Really important. So I'm going to emphasize that once more, when the temperature goes up, the resistance goes down. And when the temperature goes down, the resistance goes up. And that's because NTC thermistors are made out of a semiconductor material. When the temperature goes up, you're increasing the number density of free electrons. So there's increase in current and there's a decrease in the resistance. So on this circuit on the left, we've actually got a circuit which is used for automatic heaters. And we're gonna look at what happens when the room gets hot, when the room gets cold. All we've got is a source of EMF, which provides V in. We've got two resistors, R1, which is a fixed resistor, and R2, you can see, is a thermistor. Across that, we've got the voltage output, and that is going to a heater, and that there is the symbol for a heater. So this circuit is, an, is a temperature sensing circuit. Let's have a look at how it works. So when the room gets hot, we say that the temperature of the room has increased. It's gone up. What effect does that have upon the, upon the thermistor? So the resistance of the thermistor as we can see from the graph, goes down. And that's because it's a semiconductor material. So if the resistance of R2 goes down, the effect that that has upon V out, we have to look at our equation here. And if the resistance of R2 goes down, V out will also go down as well. And the heater gets less power, which is exactly what you want. So let's just consider that once more. When the temperature goes up, the resistance of the thermistor goes down, the voltage across the thermistor goes down as well, therefore the heater gets less power, which is exactly what you want. When the temperature goes up, the heater gets less power and it may even turn off. So let's have a look at the opposite. When the temperature goes down, the resistance of the thermistor is gonna go the opposite way this time and the resistance is gonna go up. Therefore V out is going to increase the thermistor gets a larger share of the potential difference in that potential divider circuit. And this means that the heater gets more power. This is an example of negative feedback. When the temperature goes up, the heater gets less power. When the temperature goes down, the heater switches on. That's exactly what you want a heater to do. So this is used in your homes where you have a thermostat. The thermostat turns your boiler or your radiators on and off based upon the temperature. Let's have a look at one more temperature sensing circuit. And this one is used in air conditioning units. The only difference in this circuit to the previous one is that we've got V out across the fixed resistor rather than the NTC thermistor. So let's just have a look what happens now when the room gets hot. So the temperature will increase, the resistance of the thermistor will therefore decrease. Therefore, the voltage across the thermistor will also go down which means that V out, the voltage or the potential difference across R2 will increase. And this means that the motor, which is this symbol here, the motor gets more power. And this motor is the thing that's controlling the fan and it's producing all that blast of cold air. So it's gonna cool the room down, which is exactly what you want because the temperature has gone up. You want the motor and the air conditioning unit to cool the room down. So let's have a look at the converse. When the temperature goes down, the resistance of the thermistor is going to increase, which means that the voltage across the thermistor will also increase, which means that the fixed resistor R2 will get a smaller share of the potential difference. So V out will go down. And that means that the motor gets less power. Once again, it's exactly what you want. When the temperature goes down, you don't need the air conditioning, so the motor gets less power and it might turn off. So this is a really simple example of how we can use thermistors in temperature sensing circuits. All you need to remember is how potential dividers work and about how they share the voltage. If the resistance goes up, that component gets a larger share of the voltage. If the resistance goes down, it gets a smaller share. You've just got to be careful whether V out is across the thermistor or whether it's across a fixed resistor here. And always remember the graph for temperature and resistance of a thermistor. And that's it. Thanks for listening. See you all soon.